the Ashley Williams show. Yeah. Yes. We got the very special guest, y'all. Y'all know I'm super intentional about the people that I bring on the show. But before I start asking all these other people, I had to ask my girl. The real TTs of Atlanta. Well, oh yeah. Some of the real TTs of Atlanta are here today. But we're gonna have a, a special conversation. It's not just about friendship. These two when I think about my relationship with Christ, my walk with God, trying to stay saved in these streets, this is really inspired me. Aww. I'm so glad that I can be all these examples leading the way. <laughs> Reach your foot. <book. laughs> <laughs> because the sin is out here. You know, so we're gonna go ahead to get into the show. We'll give them introductions as we kind of tell our stories because I think all of us are in that journey at different places and I remember the before that. Oh, that's beautiful. So, new segment of the show. We are turning lemons into lemonade. And so I'm going to ask each of the ladies to share their most recent, or it doesn't have to be recent, but lemon to lemonade story. Who wants to start? Go ahead, Janicia. Oh, why? Thank you. <laughs> um, so, I'm Janicia. I've known Ashley for... Since college. Yeah, I was like, I really don't do math. Um, Janae does, man. She does. Janae, can you so a few years, man? four, about five years here, so almost 10 years. Um, known, known Ashley, mm -hmm. so I'm excited to be here. Thank you for that. Thank you. Um, <laughs> my limit to lemonade story because I'm really ready to take a sip. Uh, without telling too much of my business, I'm like one of the open friends, but I was pregnant in 2021. I found out I was pregnant, and now I'm pregnant again, expecting my second. Um, thank you. Thank you. We're waiting on Pina. Yes, to come. So the first, like, pregnancy, I just allowed everybody else's emotions to kind of, not kind of, but to very much so um, tell me how I wanted to feel about my child, feel about the pregnancy, feel about just my life, what it was about to look like, how I felt about my husband. It just really all, like, I took on everybody else's feelings mm -hmm. and emotions. Um, and including some people that are like very close to me, but you know, people be people. And so, you know, I don't really hold anything against them, but this time around, I was like, you know what? This is not me, my man, and my kid. Um, and so we kept it up to ourselves up until last weekend. And it's been really great. It's been such a beautiful blessing. I'm so excited. I have a different understanding and appreciation for like this walk and motherhood. And I just look forward to more, like, what's to come. Like, yeah, that's my limit to limit A. I love that for you. Do you get to take a sip? Yeah. We both ask the sip. I'll wait. It's just the cheers. I'll wait. I'll wait. It's going to be like, yeah. Okay. I really have a limit to limit A moment. Mine is more of a testimony. So, I don't know if people, first of all, bring back testimony service. Here, oh, we have to right. Come to God's tabernacle. 6410 Watson Street, you can see. My church has we been but, testimony service um, every Sunday. A lot of people don't know, but in 2022, at the end of 2022, around October, November, um, I was in a really dark space mentally. Mm -hmm. And the best way I can describe it is that there is a difference between your subconscious and your conscious mind. Mm -hmm. And the enemy was having a field day, my subconscious mind. Mm -hmm. I had a loop of you're a failure you're not living a life worth living you haven't done anything you are a failure essentially was the pg-13 version of what he was looping on a regular basis and i was hearing that subconsciously um and i was seeing social media which mm -hmm. affirmed everything that he was saying like look at all these things that people are doing now consciously i know that social media is fake i know that it's everybody's highlight reel i know that i know that in real life i'm successful and i'm God has done amazing things in my life. Um, so I just spent the first quarter of 2023 reprogramming my subconscious. Mm -hmm. Every single day, like affirmations, Bible verses, whatever it is, telling myself, who who did God say I am? Yeah. What verse is what the enemy was telling me every day. So the second half of 2023, phenomenal. 2023, Ooh. phenomenal. <laughs> my mental health has never been better. Um, but yeah, I just had to be more cognizant of what I was consuming because it was affirming what the enemy was saying. Oh, I'm glad that you've yeah. been able to like see the sunshine at the end of the rainbow because I feel like the devil try you as soon as you want to bring up something weak. That's it. Like he comes like, chill out, sir. I'm 
to the bathroom with a guy. Um, do I have to have one? Yes. Lead by example. Yeah. Oh, what is mine? I said I was going to share the one about work, but now you made me, you made a cover, and I'm like, should I share that? I say whatever God lays on your heart. Okay, I'm going to share it, y'all. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, I've been in my, in my current role for what? It'll be two years in March, and ever since I've been on that team, there has been a new leader. But my peer and I, you know, we've been sticking it out together. Like, we're going to ride this way. We're the only two that's going to be here. But she left Ooh. in January. And on the normal circumstances, I'm going to be gone. I'm going to get a new hello. Here's my resume. I'm going to the NAVA convention and I'm getting a new job. Like, I'm not standing here for this. But Sometimes God will have you really sit in a place mm -hmm. because it's not time for you to leave. Mm -hmm. And it's not time for me to leave. I don't need to go get a new job doing a new thing. He wants me to sit right here. So I said, God, if I'm going to have to sit here and deal with all of this that's going on, what is going to be the glory out of this? And so while I believe that I've been doing the same great job that I've been doing, people are now actually seeing my value now that could be we need to have a different conversation yeah. about that but instead of looking at this and saying well it's time for me to go i think the lemonade out of this is me being obedient in this season mm -hmm. and being valued for the work that i'm doing and taking this as an opportunity to really show up and say you should have been paid before but like, the promotion should be here now right so now i have the opportunity to really shine in that space Whereas for whatever reason, I don't think I did prior. So okay. I'm taking this as an opportunity to win and be obedient instead of getting a job. And God might have been moving those people out so that you could come to the forefront. So you don't know how that was all working for you. Good. Hey, come on. Amen. Y'all see why I brought them. So, <laughs> y'all can do great. Cheers. Let you tell everybody. I hope y'all like this segment since I can't have a porch. Ooh. Oh, that's good. Take no and have a drink. Yes. <laughs> what? I'm thirsty. If, um, so, I don't think they're nervous, but I had, I heard some uh, feedback that y'all might be a little nervous. So, to get us started, I have a little game. This is a black card revoke game. It's called Save Your Sanctified. So, I'm going to talk about how strong women of God they are. Yeah, thank you so much. Let's see how strong they really are. So, there are 10 cards, I think. I've already kind of separated these to make the, um, the game go. Yeah. Okay, I played some versions. Of this. So, there are two versions. There's Majority Wins, since this is the Ashley Williams show, I'm Majority. So there's going to be a card that's asked, and whatever I think the best answer is, that's the best answer. Okay. And then there's the correct answer is Wins. Yeah. So this is actually like, um, can we pause? Y'all are distracting. So there are 10 cards, and there are two categories. The first one is Majority Wins. And since this is the Ashley Williams show, Actually, is the majority. So whichever answer, I think that's the one. But there's also correct answers. So this is like Bible goals. So you you got to know the word. Do you have the scripture or not? Period. <laughs> Period. But this is how the points work. Each of you start at ten. For every card you get right, you stay where you are. For every card you get wrong, you lose the points. Okay. And whoever has the most points at the end wins. Okay. And oh, so you guys get. A, B, C, or D. So you're going to put up A, B, C, or D for the one that you think is correct. Oh, Lord. Oh, okay. All right. And we're starting with majority rules. Okay. All right. Answer the question, where might your mom pop you at church? A, in the bathroom, B, in the parking lot, C, in your seat, or D, anywhere? Anywhere. Yeah. I chose anywhere, too. Oh, That's right. <laughs> so both of y'all stay at 10. <laughs> Okay, according to Mama, what sort of things might you not be allowed to do if you're Pentecostal? Oh, that was bad, sis. Yeah, me too. Hey, Koji. But go ahead, it might be standing above it. But come just like Pentecostal. Okay, let's see. <laughs> A, play cards. B, go to the movies. C, go out dancing. D, have fun. Oh, D. I was like, I don't think yeah. they had fun at all. I was like, yeah. I don't think D, but I got a The movies was, anyway. So, most of y'all are at The movies were a bad place. <laughs> I 
I don't know for yeah. her experience. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, moving on. Uh, you know you at a black person's funeral when you hear, it should have been me, Lord. That's not my cousin in the casket. Do you have an extra program? Or why is she in the middle of thing? It's a, it's a good one. The family probably gonna do it every time. I said the why she in the middle of thing. The family's um, car is a big one, for real. So you have kids, you have nine. Okay. I'm used to seeing people crying. That was in the costume. I'm used to seeing people crying. Yeah, yeah. But the limousine is spicy. Yeah. Because yeah. don't put me in the same Cut some mm -hmm. Right. I've only been to like two funerals in my life. I'm sorry. I, I, I see the first thing on card. Y'all, I'm not trying to be in the damp, <laughs> the damp or damp. My mom and I are able to laugh about it. But it was one year. My uncle died. Then my granddaddy died. Then my grandmother died. Then my, like all in like a three year. or four year period. Back to back. Now we're able to be like, yeah, we ain't got no money because we got to put flowers on the grave. You know how much great flowers cost? No, we don't. Get more of it. I've only been to I think, I don't think it's necessary. And so I think everybody has a different way of grieving. There. And that's my mom's way. Like, oh, I'm going to take that. Like the flowers are plastic. Girl, plastic. Oh, the real ones die so fast. Okay. Yeah. Plastic. But the plastic feels clean. Yeah. Uh, it's the Yeah. Tell her just plant some. Tell her. She watched the show. Plant some flowers. We miss you. I cannot wait to see her reaction. But she was like, Tell the business. Right. <laughs> she gonna laugh. We laugh about it. And I have a theory, it's not important. Okay. No. I I don't think people I think they're reusing like burial sites. Oh, I agree. Did y'all see there's a case in some part of Georgia where um this family they asked to uh, dig up the remains of their loved ones yeah. so that they can move to the state they were in now because it was too far to be coming to visit. And they dug up and they didn't, nothing was there. And they were like, oh, like she's one with the earth now. Like it's gone. And they were like, oh. I think they, they, they was like, like yeah, they did that. And them. they reset the land. Yeah. So now it's a whole Because think about like in Chattanooga, there's only like three cemeteries. But how many people died? Yeah, right. They aren't expanding Where are they going? the land. So. And it takes so space. long for bodies to decompose, yeah. like to, to nothing. And expand. the casket and the clothes. Exactly. They can find their loved one. Black family, justice for them. That's crazy. And Black History Month. It is, period. <laughs> Check on your loved ones. That's the Hit them up. up. Dig them up. <laughs> Sorry. What might, what might your grandma McCall a sensual woman? Ooh, this is good. Oh, my gosh. A, worldly. B, gentleman. C, a harlot. Or D, loose. Oh. Oh, it's between. I, can, I had to. I'm, yeah, I'm going to say B and loose. I chose Jezebel, so both of y'all make the points. I don't remember the score. I think you have one list. I'm back now. Wait, why do you want? You got my I like this game. I think it's 10 to 9. Yeah. Last majority rule. So the next one is really, yeah. Okay. At, okay. A church mother just gave you the look. What did you do? Me. Talking during prayer. Popping that girl, that's B, C, talking to the choir stand, or D, walk down the center aisle during the sermon. B. Ooh. I mean, based on, I don't want to lose a point, but based on my personal experience, it's just my experience. I was in the choir stand. I wasn't in the stand, so that's yeah, the experience. I was just in the choir stand. I chose D, because what you right. doing walking down the center aisle? But people know not to the Well, my baby walked down the street. You can't walk down the street. I don't do church. Not very soon. Yeah, we get you. You have to post. Sit down. Sit down. To go to the altar? But that means the usher. No, like during Sunday. You just wanted to go to the altar. No, it's like, I don't want it. That's a security purpose. Sit down. Go to the altar. Security in church. Not security, just they proper order. Churches. I'm like, worshiping, and then in the middle of service, I just want to go lay at the altar. That's I can't take up the center. That's not that. I've not seen that in any of my churches that I've been I've seen during the, the sermon. It yeah. said a church mother. I'm I know, I know, I know, I know. Not like I'm worshiping. I'm being, I'm being a distraction in the service. Not I'm participating. I'm but she's people. saying. I get what you're saying. I know. Like, you, you're you're saying you're slaying the spirit and you're saying. Just trying to move. Like, you wouldn't get the look. You wouldn't get the look. I bet you walking all up your third day at any time, but her third day didn't pass That's why I was saying. Hey, Bubba. 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 Hey,
They get they they for free. Oh, we do. No, they apply harder. Just you don't see them. They're different. They're different. They get corrected in pride. We get corrected in pride. Have y'all seen somebody get them? Yeah, church. Yes. Not in my growing up church, not in my adult church. church. church yeah. Mm. I don't like when they sit people down for visible sins. Like, I don't yeah. know right. if, if you're lying, but if you pray, yeah. so I'm going to sit you down. That's but what I'm going to say. say you down. Down. I'm not that because they do that. Yeah. yeah. My church. Okay, correct answer. <sighs> Let's see who's going to say. Which denomination has the most members? A, AME, B, Church of God of Christ, C, Pentecostal, D, Baptist. Oh, for sure. Baptist Convention be lit every year. No, I feel like... What's your church church down first? B. B. B is the answer that I thought it was. No, but it's Baptist. Baptist. You are my favorite. <laughs> yeah, you don't know. post of Ashley Williams show. So she means you're correct. I wouldn't guess that. It is B. Okay. I mean, B. D, 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 oh, Baptist. I was it's D, Baptist. Oh, they don't have how many? Okay. No, but I do know, like, Baptist is missionary. Yeah, it's the best. Everybody, they were born. Most of the denominations were, we're born, born at the best. Coach was born okay. at the best. So you are now tied. Nine and nine. Hold on, Actually, I don't remember. It's okay. Y'all can start the school. Yeah. Which one of these people was not put in prison? A. This is my Bible. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> Which one of these people was not put in prison? A. Daniel, B. Peter, C. Elijah, D. Jeremiah. Daniel was in the lion's den. Who was B? Peter, Peter. was Peter was the disciple. Who was the Elijah? Elijah was in. Was he in the fire? I don't know. Oh, there was the, the three. Oh, oh. Oh, he's a dog. Uh, you can hear it. I'm glad I didn't bring my child. Put out. Only and then what was D? C is Elijah. D is Jeremiah. It was B. I don't think Jeremiah went to prison. And he was Peter. Kind of Peter crazy. was like Peter. One of Jesus is like he's in Luke, and Jesus would be like talking to him and stuff. Like one of them, he was crucified. Though I think he did go to prison. Oh really? Okay. Yeah. Let's see what he had. And I think they he hit him. It was okay. Let's go. What's the answer? I didn't know the answer. The answer is C. Elijah. Both the y'all. Oh, I should have read the Bible to figure out why. Producer, can you go Google that? Why was Elijah in prison? A <laughs> hundred thousand views, and the producer is gonna show her face. Yeah, because I never. Okay. You googling? Which one did you choose? Jeremiah. Jeremiah. We're gonna. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> This is coming from Genesis 3 and 6 of the beginning. What fruit did Eve eat? Oh. A, a watermelon. B, a watermelon. <laughs> a, a watermelon. B, an apple. C, a peach. Or D, the Bible doesn't say. The Bible doesn't say. It does not say But a voice would be like Was it actually it was, fruit? It was papaya. Hmm. It was did fruit. Did you find that answer? What did Elijah to go to jail for? Yeah, about what was his charge? My granddaddy gonna be disappointed. It's okay, granddad. We we're learning. We're actively in Bible Thank study. You. Amen. Oh my God! I felt this in my spirit. Answer the question. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life. Amen. That's what they do that with y'all. <laughs> okay. Who is referred to as the queen of gospel music? A, Maggie Box Clark. B, Yolanda Adams. No tea, no shade. C, my sister. Oh, Carol may not be on there. <laughs> She's trying to keep it. Uh, <laughs> <see, laughs> C, C Mahalia Jackson. And B, Shirley Caesar. But we can actually talk about it. It's in the bank. It's Mahalia. But she can't. Oh, that's messed up. Which, which one is the She didn't have the. Because, do y'all remember the. Um, the um documentary with her in it about her life. No, I didn't watch it. She was like going around singing at all of the um blues conventions. No, it wasn't clubs. And she like she sang at a lot of like um there's a there's a movie. There's a movie. I'm gonna find it. But that's the only reason I know. Like I they blackballed her or something? No, they didn't blackball her, but they were always calling her. Oh. 
I, and I think it was honestly about the the movie about the Clark sisters because isn't uh -huh. she a part of yeah? No, she's not a Clark. Sister. Maddie Moss Clark is the mom. mom. Yeah. yeah, and remember that Lifetime had made a movie about them, and wherever they were going to sing, Mathalia Jackson was like the. Um, Learn to keep something, child. You know, I watch some TV. I yeah. do not worry too. Much. I was about to censor you about the Kid Burrell issue. Yeah, I forgot. What's going on? Oh, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to censor you because I we're trying to get, canceled. I'm not going to be canceled because when God is in it, there is no limit. Amen. But I think that that's an important conversation to the larger conversation we're about to have is the effects that people have on millennials in church. Now, we know that we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but the reality of a thing is that people can turn other away from the church. Oh, so, okay. yes. So if, sure. if you have a responsibility as a minister or an evangelist, if you are not using that wisely, you're wrong. That's a higher response because we all have a responsibility as yes. a part of the body of church of Christ. But so we just got that nasty spirit. So, so, so nasty, so rude. Producer Elijah Jail. <laughs> They have blamed him for the drought that was happening. Oh, he was blamed for that? And they put him in jail? That's not all the thing. Okay, y'all, you passed all the time. What? 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 We saved over here at the Ashley Williams show. <laughs> that was funny. We can do the whole thing. We can do the whole thing. Yeah, we can do it. So I just alluded to... <laughs> I just alluded to it, but today's conversation is going to be about millennials in the church. I know we're struggling, y'all, and I'm not judging anybody for any decision that they've made. If you've chosen to leave the church for whatever reason, if you do church on your couch, this isn't a judgmental space. We want to bring the issues to light so that we can work together as a community to help get us back to a place where we're one with the Lord. So no judgment zone. We just talking about it. And I ain't nobody's deacon, evangelist, missionary, mission minister. I ain't none of that. I'm just a child of the king trying to learn the word. So you want to be a deacon dance? If that's what God has for me. Just right now, he just said, I want you to study. Just go to church. That's all. <laughs> Help with the kids. Yeah. Teach a praise dance here and there. But y'all, we gonna get to it. I know we gotta get to it. But where y'all, what did y'all do in church? Um, you in the choir. I was I saying, I was back up dancing. <laughs> Let me see them. But I really couldn't. I really didn't have it. Yeah, me either. But I, um, I sing a lot of solos in church. So I was singing on Sundays and singing a lot of revivals, singing okay. at people's funerals, singing okay. at, um, what will be happening um, in the summertime, not vacation Bible school, but it was like all the church Could be convention. convention. Dang. Um, well, we didn't have to. Yeah. Um, what else did I do? And I was just like a part of like the youth team, but I was like, was in church. Maybe a not. lot, like that's where I met all my boyfriends and stuff. Wow, like that's honest. Yeah, it's a place is. where you my high school, I was in church. See, it's real. I guess I'm looking at guys in church. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey, they went to other churches, but they weren't in my yeah. yeah. I was only doing like junior usher board. Mm, I did. I was. Uh, yeah. Clubs? yeah. I was like a door greeter, yeah. and I always had an Easter speech. I was like, like yeah. but I didn't sing no, unless it was you day and everybody, everybody had to rock. You didn't have a choice back in the day. My granny was like, "You go." Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, I'm here. I did all the things: youth choir, praise dance. When my granny was living, I was an usher. But this is the perspective. We all been in church since we were younger. So let's hop into the questions. So because we all have been in church all of our lives. So I talked about this at the earlier. So we know church front and back. Like I can walk you through everything. Hallelujah. Uh, hand clap, playing the tambourine. We can do all that. All right. Right. Well, <laughs> <laughs> but when did you actually choose christ for yourself and actually started walking on the walk without it being i don't even use the word performative but just tradition in which you knew what was right or what you were taught to do i have a different perspective on it from my personal experience because um when i was in third grade i, I was raised in church obviously since i think i joined 
I was baptized at like five or six. Um, and my granny let me choose that. Like she didn't say you want to do it. She said when you feel like you want to, cool. I was six, whatever. Um, but in third grade, I went to go live with my great grandmother, and it was just the two of us. And she was like eighty-five, maybe. I elderly is my point. Mm-hmm. And so I would read the Bible because I didn't understand at nine. How my I was younger, or whatever. Like eight or nine, I didn't understand it then, but I know like the Holy Spirit was meeting me mm-hmm. in those moments. Mm-hmm. And so I was reading the, the word of God and learning the word of God. So I didn't know God for myself from a kid. It wasn't mm-hmm. performative for me then. Like I would, in high school, I leaned on it. I mean, I don't know. It's just kind of been in me. That's always been my comfort place. That's I didn't know that. I think yeah. that's a good perspective. That's really good. Similar to Alex, I grew up in church, um, but... My great, my granddad's been a pastor my whole entire life. My mom, she kind of grew up as a PKK, but only in the summer when she would come to visit here in Atlanta. Um, but back home, um, she was going to church, but I'm really what got my family into church. My aunt worked at the daycare mm-hmm. that was at the church, and I loved it. But I loved all of the the things yeah, yeah, that the was things. happening. Yeah. But we had smoke machines and lights and stuff like that, and that's what we need to talk about. <laughs> But I loved, like, it just felt good. And, you know, some people feel like that's problematic. Like, oh, like, you know, church, you know, the all the emotions that come with it. But it felt so good to me. And so I would go home and my mom got this big, y'all know that white holy Bible oh, yeah. that pastors get when you get married. And in the front of that, there are these, like, color pages, like a kid's oh, version yeah. of, like, what's to come. So I would read that and stuff. And the next thing you know, I'll be in my mom's you know, king-size bed. Have my brother and my sister, I would have them switching out different roles in the big. Y'all was playing church. We both had us I didn't Yes, and I called myself <laughs> Preacher Zoo Terry. And we would so I don't know where it came from, but I was Preacher Zoo Terry. And we would see my grandparents often and we were going to church and stuff. And so I would like practice like my granddad's uh and uh. Oh, and, oh. and I was like, just really be like mimicking him and 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 ever since then but to answer your question like i knew church and the structure of church but when i started i really just a year ago started to take my walk seriously Mm -hmm. like actually to really try to live a holy life and set myself apart okay totally separated by being this (laughs) <laughs> but that that literally literally just happened a year ago when we started our young folks bible like i knew church but i didn't know god for myself i knew him through this this us coming together to talk about him and through the lens of like other people's faith but not through like reading his word and having an understanding of what that means for myself and so yeah i'll be honest yeah i feel like i'm not a babe in christ but i just got off the milk I just got off the loop. You're a talking with Yeah. yeah. we are like a little tough Yeah, you're yeah. talking okay, girl. And I think that's okay. Like, I think sometimes when you talk about this, it can seem so big, like a relationship with Christ and mm-hmm. getting saved. And it is a big thing, but it's a journey. Like, when you go down to that altar or wherever you are, because it don't have to happen Sunday on the yeah. altar, but whenever you make that decision and say, I truly want to get to know Christ for myself, it's a journey. Nobody's expecting yeah. you to be delivered from a thing immediately. Mm-hmm. But if your heart posture is right, you find people to be in community with that makes it easier. Yeah. yeah. And I think you incorporate it into your life. It's yeah. not yeah. this it's Sunday. Not a Sunday. Yes. Or like this day or in front of these certain people. It's like in your lifestyle. Okay, I'm really making these choices. And it hasn't been easy. Mm-hmm. It is That's my next question. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta do co host. So my next question is what has been the most challenging part since making that commitment? Oh. I feel like it's really for me. Yeah, some of the day-to-day decisions and, like, making sure my mind first goes to God. Like, for example, I have a really bad road rage. And that's one thing that I feel like God is, like, really present day working with me on. Because I'll be in the car and I'll be saying all types of things, like, just just mean, nasty, bad. And then he'll be like, that's your brother. That's your sister. And I'll be like, Lord, forgive me. Like, so those day-to-day decisions are are definitely there. Um, But I feel like one thing that I have to, to work on, it's not hard, but one, one thing I have to work on and like truly do is like be my spirit man, build my spirit man up because 
she be weak sometimes. She be weak. Um, <laughs> and it's not like, oh, like my flesh, like the physical, it's the mental thing, like remembering, like, what is this? Like, this this for my good. I know you have mentioned that earlier. Like, this is all gonna be for my good. Like, what does God say about me? What are those promises that have been laid out? Because the enemy has a way of like finding the smallest things and it don't even be like anything that's major i just say mm-hmm. smallest things but it's not anything major and they'll take that it, it'll just fester and grow and snowball into something big and so really knowing the word and like hiding it in my heart um so that i can bring it back is the remembrance it's the remembrance i brought that up with y'all. i'm like how you gonna be remembering this like i know what it says and i feel like you know i know songs and i know some scriptures but just being able to recall that and like mm-hmm. name these things like in the moment that's what i might like, really work about I love that. What's your For me, it's humility. Um, just to be honest, I, I'm good with God when things are bad. I know to go to him. I know like that's where my strength comes from. I know to go to God. But when everything is good, everything's cushiony, I'm like, okay, let me just out. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. That, like life is good. But being intentional about saying, even though life is good, I'm still going to seek God daily. Right. That's where I struggle. Like, oh, it's all bad. Oh, I go to run to God. But mm-hmm. being consistent when it's good, it's hard. Oh, I love that. I want to share mine. So, especially I've been feeling this now in this season. I was going to ask the producer to pull up a scripture. This done got um, in it. So the Bible talks about, you said being set apart, but it also calls people who have chosen to walk this life a peculiar people. Mm -hmm. So you have to be set apart. You have to turn away from things that are not of God. And the hardest thing to do is walking away from people who are not ready to live that lifestyle. And that doesn't mean we can't be friends. I can't talk to you. Oh my gosh, you're a sinner. But sometimes, what's that? You can draw me or... You, somebody's pushing and somebody's doing the pulling. Right. So if somebody, if I'm trying to live a life of Christ, but I ain't used to this, and Alex up here like, girl, come on, let's go turn up. I'm, I'm going to be with Alex turning <laughs> up, right? So that's the part of me because they, these, there are people who I genuinely want to be in community with, but I know I ain't there yet to be like, okay, I can't do it. No, I want to turn up too. <laughs> Experiment. Right, right. So I have to really challenge myself and say, okay, if you are going to intentionally be in a space because you want to be in community with people, you got to stand up what you believe in. That means yeah. saying no, say no. If you can't go, you can't go. Right. It don't make you a bad person. It doesn't yeah. make them a bad person. Yeah. I just know I'm not there. Yeah. I'm still a babe in Christ. So there's some things that I just can't do. Yeah. yeah. And that's hard for me, y'all, because y'all know I love everybody. I love everybody. You're supposed to. <laughs> I mean, the love. Not to give, but I want to know somebody. I'll Google it and put it in the description what that scripture is. Okay. Did it hit me So we talked about our journeys in Christ, where we are spiritually, and one of the things that I really, really want to focus on in this show or this episode, because I think people have the conversation for us, Mm -hmm. is the state of the church as it relates to millennials. Mm -hmm. I sound like a preacher Mm -hmm. as it relates. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about it, y'all. What's your opinion of the current church? Where are we? What's wrong? What we need to do better? And I feel like we kind of believe the church, so I, I, I want to talk about that. Too. I do feel like they're very I think we need to be more specific. Are we talking about millennials or young people? Because millennials are forty year olds. I feel like my like that. We are we not in church mm-hmm. as a whole? I think a lot. I don't know. Actually, I probably should do some. I feel like for our church. Um, well, what I did watch when I studied, they were like millennials. It's like our age group that's leaving because we were the kind of the first to be introduced to like, um, like the pronouns and like the gender switching uh, and things like that. Like, so actually, you know, all of that was kind of happened when we were in like college. Like yeah. yeah, like, um, like, um, what was it? All the social justice. I mean, granted, all that stuff was happening and has nothing is new. Um, but. I feel like for our church, we have more people in Bible study than we do in church. Like the young adults. Mm-hmm. Really? Like it's yeah. more of us that go to Bible study than church than show up at church on Sunday. And that's, that's interesting. Mm-hmm. I think we lack commitment as a whole. 
as our generation, we're just not committed. Like, if you think back, like when your grandmother or our grandmothers were like mothers of the church, that's all they did. Like, that was their source of so, like when we want to hang out, we go to brunch. We take a trip together. We are the doing third, all these the third space, space, third spaces. Yeah. Church was their third space. It was all of us have kids together. We raised our kids. We're all married. We're all wives. Like, I think that was their source of community, but we have more options now. Yes. So and we I have to be more intentional to go to church. And I think, and kind of what you were saying, like church, when we think about even before, like, we were the new adults. It was a family thing. Mm-hmm. Right. So what you did on a Sunday is families. A lot of us mm-hmm. are, whether we're choosing it or we're not choosing it, like our lives don't, are not following right. that traditional pathway. Um, and I do, I'm, I'm not saying that that's like the exact reason why we're not in church, but I do think that has something to do with it. But I do think we are hard on the church. I don't know. I think you just said yeah. that. I think we're hard on the church. We have expectations of the church that we are not necessarily like vocalizing out to them. And I know I'm in a privileged place to say that because I have direct access to my pastor. Yeah. Um, or access to my pastor that doesn't look like, you know, the general membership. But we have these expectations, we have these things that we desire, but we're not sharing them um, or figuring out, putting ourselves in a place where we prioritize, like, church, how we prioritize work, or how we prioritize, like, our hobbies, our friend groups. Um, And I'm not saying that's at any fault of, like, anybody, um, but it's just a choice that we have to decide to make. But church isn't one of those, like, pillars in our community as it once was. And I think yeah. to y'all's point, because I was thinking about this, I was like, yeah, what am I saying? I need to have some value what I'm saying. <laughs> when you think about the black church, and I'm not here to argue about the validity of the church or the Bible. That's a whole other conversation. But how we have experienced the black church, out of slavery, that's all they had. And they really couldn't read the words of the Bible. So when you think about, like, really to your point, that's all they had. There wasn't anything more. Now you can get the Bible on your phone. You can go to church in your house. You don't have to go to that space. Coupled with sometimes as a millennial, when you're trying to figure yourself out and you're dealing with people and people in the church aren't always what they should be. Yeah. It's hard to reconcile. I want to be in a relationship with Christ, but you the pastor and you play a rap music and we sweat 30 in your church. I'm confused. Like, I don't know how to separate the word of God and who he is from the person that's supposed to be leading me. And that's not always the responsibility of the pastor. It's like, no, like we have to take take yeah. some accountability. But I'm, me and Alex go back and forth about this. And we're going to have conversation, this argument online. Yes, as a believer, I got to know God for myself. Fair. But you also tell me to go to church to get guidance because they're leading me. So... How am I supposed to separate the two? Like, why am I? What what encourages me to go to your church if I feel like you don't live a life of like Christ, and then you're supposed to be teaching me? And now, like, help me through it. That's like, do we really want our pastors to be? I feel like we're saying you want them to be high level. Yeah. Like, do you want your pastor level? to be this royal priest? not swag surfing in church and i'm not saying swag surfing church but i'm saying you want him to live this holy lifestyle right right mm-hmm. but then you also want him to not call you out or hold you accountable when you're not living this because he's human too yeah like do you want him to be human or do you want him to be this perfect i'm asking him to be human but they mean that he's human and they and do I, it, oh. I think it depends on where you're going and that's what you got to study for yourself you got to pray for wisdom, pray for discernment. Um, because let's just be real. I, I used to go to the Dream Center. Like I was a regular member. You were like, No, I was church. not. I was that guys. No, we didn't do uh, it. Like, yeah. But I would say when I was visiting that church like in 2019, I wouldn't have expected that, you know, that you know, he would do something like like that would be a thing like really? years later. Um, it, it it was like there are these big churches that are very different and they uh, that operate very different. But I'm similar to Alex. I like more of a traditional Amen. church. Like tap stick me down. You know, like I, I like that. I I'm not one like to have my feelings super involved and get my feelings hurt. 
um, based off of these, you know, traditional rules that some are made up and completely not in the Bible, but I'm fine with that. But I would have never expected that. It, it could have been like he was just having a moment like we all do. And, and I get what you're saying. Like, and why are we then, giving him grace? Exactly. Exactly. I you know grace. Why do we give him grace? Because, let me say why I'm not like giving him grace. Yes. He's like, all right, I'm just telling you what their issues are. And I'm not saying change your things. But it was a complete disregard for, and we've talked, my biggest issue is about the conversation that we've had about music and what we know you're supposed about to, music. You're supposed to kind of know, you're supposed to, you're supposed to kind of know these things. But then I also, knowing my word, I know that God holds shepherds of his flock to yes. a way higher standard than we can even fathom. And like, they're going to be judged on a completely different level. And, but I know that because I've read that. And so it's like, Okay, because I've experienced, you know, some, some, I'm not going to say church part, but just some church, like, this rub me wrong, and I want to dip, and I want to go somewhere else, but I had to really, like, pray about it and talk to God, I'm like, okay, this is your child, this is also, I'm in this place, like, help me, give me wisdom to maintain this relationship, um, but to also not wear my emotions on my sleeve, I can't really talk about what the Bible says about emotions, but... It's like you kind of. Do you think that if you get hurt, <laughs> if you get hurt in the church, you should still like push through that? I did. I did. I personally did, but I think that depends on like your level, your relationship. Um, and it's then we have to change cars. Um, that depends on like where you are, like in your walk. I was able to see beyond it. I also wasn't. It wasn't. If I was an individual doing it by myself. I probably would have been like, no, like, I'm good. But I had my now husband then with me. We were kind of going through the same things. And so we were able to, like, be together on one accord, consult God on our own, and then come together and really make an informed decision. And in the end, we decided to stay. And it was like, dang, like, we were hurt, but hurt. And I don't think everybody makes that decision. Because no. that takes effort, that takes faith, that takes more than being a babe in Christ to be. Humility. And that's who I'm fighting for. The baby babes in Christ who are getting hurt, and their, their hurt is valid, in church and are saying, I don't want to deal with nothing. Because I've been, I've been a part of all the things. Church of God in Christ, I've seen it all. I was a part of the All Nations movement, I've seen it all. Oh, really? Yes. Okay. So that's what I'm telling y'all. Like, it, takes, it takes strength to be able to say, I'm gonna separate this person from Christ, and I'm not it, judging it, or blaming people yeah. who say, I'm not there yet. I'm trying to give them resources to get there. We're gonna pray. So, and to your point, base and Christ, yes. I think there's a balance. Number one. I'll start with our generation. Like I said before, we have unspoken expectations. Like, yeah, we do. I would agree. Also, because in the Bible, God specifically says, like, people knew in the word, they're babes in Christ. Like, they need to be on milk. When you think about a baby, like, mothers and parents are attending to a baby 24 7. Baby. What do you mean? Like, let me go get this for you. But don't you want to explain why they can't express their ex expectations? They can I feel like that's a good point. Yeah. But I think. Like you're saying, oh, I can't be mature enough to communicate, but you drink it out of a bottle. Because we're communicating. And that's what I'm saying. We're, we're communicating, but we're communicating okay, on our phone. We're communicating to each other. We're communicating, like, with people going viral, like, oh, I got hurt by the church. This is why I'm going to church no more. Like, all these things. So I think it's a shared responsibility. I do think, first of all, a lot of leadership in churches need to cycle out. And it's about to happen, like, I feel like just, just many places. You see the new generation, not new generation, but us, we're the we're right Yeah. But I do think we need to treat base in Christ as base in Christ, not necessarily coddling, but being there, providing resources, creating things based off of like you, it, it doesn't take a rocket science to like rocket scientists to do what we did, made a Bible study for young people. But we had the will. I'm saying, I don't think that they can't communicate. I don't think that they're being heard. I think it's, that's just a millennial. They just, young. I don't think that's they, 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 like, like, yeah. If you're not, so I think you have people who are disgruntled about a church that they've experienced, and you have leadership who just does not care. understand. Because my mom, me and I, go, her and I go to this thing where I'm like, girl, you cannot get it. And she'd be like, I don't. So I'm talking about something. We love you, girl. She's going to be on the show. But she'd just be like, I 
don't like I just had to get up and go and do I don't have time for that. Yeah. So I don't think that they're the place to receive what we're saying so that there's this this she can't us down when we're talking about our anxiety. Well she said anxiety. Yeah. What is that? <laughs> I'm just so anxious. I was like, but y'all so that where do y'all think I Yes. what's accountability. My issue is the, the, I'm not invalidating church hurt. It happens. I acknowledge it. It's unfortunate. I appreciate Sarah Jakes Roberts getting on the public platform and apologizing on behalf of the church. That was great. That's one side. The other side is that I feel like our generation, church, period, our generation lacks accountability. Okay. Can't nobody Talk tell us that. Okay. Can't nobody tell you you selfish in your friendships. You are pocket at work. You too loud. Yeah. What you got on? Can't nobody tell you nothing. Where's the accountability when I say, uh, actually, you got your chest down. We in service. Why she talking to me? She judging me. She, I ain't going back to church. No, I just said, come to your chest down. That's it, it. I don't have a, a problem with the accountability. I agree. It's levels. I'm not saying it has to be rude. And that's what I'm not trying to play. play. And that's what I'm trying to play. I wouldn't come to you in front of everybody. I'll pull you to the side. We got to get back to pull people to the side. Pull you to the side. Tell you in love. The delivery doesn't have to be for real. Level. But it's okay to hold people accountable. The house of God is the house of God. And we're not acting like that. That's good. The standard of God is the standard of God. I but by, I have four, but I agree. My thing is, at what point do you do that? Because I'm stuck on at what point do I say, Alice, Alice is in my church trying to cheat your for a So at what point do I say, I'm going to get to know her and understand why she got her titties out, for lack of a better word, in my church before I cheat her own? Yeah. How many Sundays you gonna let her have her bosom out before you say something? Until maybe she's convicted upon that. Because there were certain sins that I didn't was, know. Didn't, didn't even know I was seeing. I wasn't convicted upon it yet. And the, the Bible says, like, with conviction, like, that's, you know, comes changing yeah, behavior. Yeah, and so, it's like, if that's not a problem, but I do think, what you're saying, with love and the heart posture, yeah. like, all of that has to be right. And people, <laughs> people, people don't be coming, people don't be coming at, people don't be coming at you right. And like, they I don't. Agree. They I don't. agree. I like, agree. I church not be yeah. You need to work on that. Again, the church needs to work on their delivery. But I also think, Maybe it's the babe in Christ part that y'all want to be. Excuse me, baby. Do you? No, no, no. Yeah, we are that generation. Oh, we are not that generation. We're struggling with depression. We're struggling with yes. We have to be. I would be more so like yo. Like, where did you get this from? Or I don't want to say that. You want it? Because you know, I don't have to put a boy, a boy. I have been in a place. I have been in a place. You're right. It's, it's not. It's just, it's just correction. It's just because this is a holy place. And we yes, need to learn. We, 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 we need to, yes, yes. And so, yeah. I, I just feel like we overcomplicated. Because you wouldn't. Where we are in our friendship now, there are certain things you would have never said to me before. Oh, but because we are where we now, you feel crying. And I think, why? But I would have told somebody close to you. Like, exactly. Yeah. And I you don't want me to tell Javicia that you got your booms out at church. Can you talk to your friends to help up? I, 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 I put that real life. Yeah. When we were in close, but <laughs> in Bible study. In Bible study. Here's a perfect example. I, I need you to do the Bible study, right? Okay. Would you rather her granddaddy correct you or Eric? I don't know. Neither. I mean, we should not do that. I ain't talking about the booty. Uh, I'm talking okay. about in general. Like, in general. In general, um, would you? I, you're just trying to say, like, somebody that you have a crush in. It doesn't feel so. So just ruly. So. Because when I said. And it's like, if somebody's rules are made up. Somebody's rules are made up. That's how it be. I'm telling you how it lands for certain people. It, I'm acknowledging that. Okay. I'm saying. Yes, the delivery should be in a way that the person can receive it. Because yeah. if that's your intention, I always say, like, if the house is on fire and I only speak English, you telling me in German, I can't do nothing. Mm -hmm. So, yes, it needs to be in a way that you can receive it. But we're not doing it at all because we're scared to hurt each other's feelings. Yeah. Or some people are just what, kind of waiting until that person figures it out themselves because it doesn't take my time to like look around what's the vibe of my church i feel like when i go and visit my friend's church 
Um, in North Cross, I'm always overdressed. They're like in jeans with the pandas and the ribs and the cardigans. Oh, they got cups of they got cups of coffee in the sanctuary. I'm like, okay, this is different. This is very different. Whereas, like in my church, I'm wearing tights. Now I do wear a little short sometimes, but if it's short, it's not gonna be tight. And if it's tight, it's not. But you good. know that. I know that. Yeah, right. I don't know that. I know that. But I have, I did, no. I did get tapped. Trippy for the people who don't. I did get tapped. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> right. So, okay. Because. I also don't want this to be a space where we put things out there without necessarily. We don't have to solve this problem because I think it's you know, a much bigger conversation. I don't think it will be solved. My personal perspective is that the, the church is going to look differently 15 years from now. Stop. Wait, wait. Can you put it straight down? Okay. So the church is going to look different. Oh, right. The church is going to look differently. 10, 15 years from now because it's the virtual space. Mm-hmm. And I think we have to be intentional about remaining community. Yeah. That's the whole reason we get together on Sunday is to commune as Christians. And build each other, build the body of Christ that like it's it's intentional. Um it is so necessary, so needed. I don't know how people get through their week without it. something. So for a millennial or whoever to be honest <laughs> is struggling with church hurt or has some sort of angst to the church what advice would you give them to persevere through to still keep that relationship relationship with christ intact the grace you want to receive be willing to give it mm. oh, that's good. good and good um church you gotta know you gotta know your word like nothing new is happening like all of what we're experienced um has happened before um, but if you know what God says about certain things and how to act, like, right. it'll pierce your heart in the way he sees fit and give you direction and wisdom and understanding if that's what you're praying for, um, for you to either move or stay, like your work situation. Mm-hmm. He wants you to stay. You're st- you're there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Um, and it could be the same with these churches. Like, you could be there. Like, well, they could be your church later. And you never know. You could be, you know. Um, and so I'm not saying get over it. Um but I'm, I'm saying getting your word to get through it. Amen. And my last piece would be community. So after I kind of went through this space of like, I don't really trust none of these people in this church. I was okay. going to church on Sunday, but I went, I was going through the motions. It wasn't until young, young adult Bible study, I found a community of believers. People were talking about the word of God in a way that was landing for me. So sometimes it ain't Sunday. It could be Thursdays, right, that you receive this. So I would, my advice would be to find a community of people that you're able to be vulnerable with and have these conversations and people that will actually lead you according to the word of God that will help re-engage you. But don't, don't give up on God. Oh, that's really Don't give up the fact. Oh, that was good. Don't give up. Think it ain't be last thing, last thing. We're gonna end on a fun note. Okay. The fun note is. Hold on. You gotta find the fun note. <laughs> okay. How? How can? Okay. We're gonna end on. I think this. This is a light on that. <laughs> because don't nobody go to church anymore. How has that affected pop culture? It's a mockery. People mock, are mocking each other. Oh, they are like on social media. It's be funny, but it is funny. And we started it with like Kev on stage and things like yeah. that. I'm saying I think it's a great platform. Yeah. But I think when we make a mockery of ourselves in church, it's funny. We all laughing, but I think it opens the door for the world to mock the church and not take I it seriously. I do agree. I do agree. I stopped listening to a particular podcast because of the comment that they made about Jesus, and I was like. That was out of line. They was basically saying like Jesus um like had a lot of women like in the Bible. Like mm-hmm. of course they didn't use that right of words. And I was like, not the holiest one. Um that was a good one. Um church impact in pop culture. I I really do like and I know some people uh uh-uh, we can't get them clout. Uh <laughs> Some people, some people have their issues with like, you know, church social media teams and things like that. But I am enjoying that there's like a churchy like algorithm on different yeah. social media platforms. It's like, okay, like I get this. Y'all know I do the AB at my church and like, 
I was like seeing different things about Finn, like how to make it better. Like there are more like pop culture is now talking about like there's side of pop culture that is talking about it in a productive and like respectful, good way. And I, it, it feels good to see it reflected because it wasn't like that when we were as kids. My example was can't nobody sing anymore because y'all ain't growing up anymore. Oh, the R and I don't like singing with a mic, but. I I'm think you got the RB girl. Oh, oh yeah. no, they cannot. No, they are not Tasha and Jennifer. I feel like those are the last of the strong churchy voices. And that's why we need to get back in church, bring the talent back to music. That's a good point. What's another one? I don't listen to secular music no more, though. <laughs> Save, sanctify, hey. and feel with the Holy Spirit. No, we flesh, so I have to go to it up. That's honest. Okay, uh, well, we can't do that. <laughs> It's a lot going on in the world and I think you're going to start hearing more and more stories about social media. I do agree with Cat Williams when he said this is this season of exposure, mm. right? And so as things are getting exposed, it's going to be way important now that you know the word of God. You're able to lean on it for yourself and you're able to separate, you know, sin from just life. Right, right. Yeah. Because these type of things that start happening are designed to keep you off your square. So you have to know the word of God for yourself. I ain't talking about all that on here because I'm just getting started, y'all. We're just trying to give yourself dirty. You're, you're doing it. You're doing it. Amen. Any last words? I, I got something to say. We know. <laughs> that was the Ashley Williams. So I really appreciate y'all. Thanks for being like, here. I, 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 y'all got y'all makeup on. Y'all got y'all. Y'all look good. You have to, oh, you know, you just have us. Yeah, you have us the standards. Yes. Mm -hmm. But I don't take it. <laughs> I don't take it lightly that y'all took out time for your day. And thank you, Sharon, on a very tricky subject. I think the people needed to hear it. All right, good job. So, thank y'all again. Ah, they said it was fun. Who want to come sit on the couch with me next? Thank y'all for tuning in to another episode of the Ashley Williams Show. We release every Wednesday, so come back next week for another episode. Thank you so much, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe.